Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today I want to talk about profiling. I'm going to start off with a basic example where I've set up some things to be intentionally slow and we'll run through some of the really simple stuff and then I'm going to dive into a semi-real project and we'll do some real kind of live profiling and I'll go through and see if I can find issues and see if we can maybe fix some of them. So to start off, like I said, I've got this simple little demo scene here. I've just got a bunch of the same cube laid out and the cube has a single script on it just called slow code. So what I'm gonna do is just run, we're gonna look at the profiler window and um, see what we can figure out. And then I'll show you kind of what, what everything means and what to look for. So here we go, we'll hit play. And if you don't know where the profiler window is, by the way, just go to window and then uh, profiler right here. There's also this little stats window, somewhat useful, but the profiler is you know, drastically better, has a whole lot more info. So let's watch and see. So right here you can see these blocks are just kind of flashing relatively randomly. It's actually cycling through just a bunch of colors. And if we look at the profiler here and hit current, what you're gonna see is the the most recent second basically of profiling data. So you can see the, is it updates I think about once a second. So you can see right here we've got update.script run behavior is at the top. By default it's filtered or sorted by the time in milliseconds. And you can see that this call right here is taking up oh, about 30 milliseconds. And if you look at the bar here you can see that that we've got a frame rate line right here. So if we're under or right at that line where it says 60, it means that we're running at 60 frames a second. Here we're spiking to as low as 30 frames a second. In fact, as we watch, it's actually going above that. So we're dipping below 30 frames a second at some times. Now what I can do is just click anywhere on here and we're, it'll pause the game and give me the info for that specific frame. And I can kind of scroll through here and look at them. I can hit current to go to the most recent frame, or you can use these arrows to go back and forth a single frame. So if we're looking for like, maybe when I find this exact spike and I clicked over here, I could always just click the arrow to get over to it, or I could drag and find it. Sometimes it's easier to use the arrows though. So let's take a look at just one random spot here. So I've just got this one picked. So let's go to this one, it's a little bit bigger. And then what we can do is expand out this script run behavior update. And you'll see here under behavior update, we've got slow code update. That's the code that we're using on these cubes. And I want to point out a couple things. First is the percentage of total. That's just how much of the, um, the profiling or the CPU time was used by this as opposed to everything else in the uh, profiler. So we've got 96.8%, 97%. It's all in here, which makes sense because this is really the only thing going on in here. Uh, but then we also have calls. So 25 is the number of times this thing is called. And again, that kind of lines up with our 25 cubes. We have five rows of five cubes. So this is getting called once for every object on there. Uh, the next thing we have is the garbage collector allocation. This is the amount of memory that's being allocated that's gonna need to be cleaned up in a garbage collection. You usually want this to be zero. Um, sometimes there are some games where you can have a little bit of garbage collection. But ideally you want to get it down to as low as possible or zero. And then here we the final thing I want to look at really is the time in milliseconds. So this is just how long we spent doing this action in this frame. Now if you look underneath you'll see we only have one thing and it's just this log string to console. And that's a pretty obvious one. This is something that you're going to see a lot if you start profiling. Logging is terribly slow. Um, but I want to see the other things too. There's actually other stuff here. So what I need to do is enable the deep profile option right here. It's kind of hard to notice, just this little box. And then I have to hit reload. Most games you're gonna have to hit that and then restart since this is really simple and there's no state at all. I think it'll be fine to just continue on. Ah, whatever, let's just do a restart anyway. Just because it's a little bit more realistic. Most games just don't work very well with uh, an edit and continue style mode. Oh, what happened there? Okay, let's stop. Let's go to current and hit play one more time. Okay, so now we're getting something really slow. No, notice how our frame rate is terribly, terribly slow. That's because I turned on deep profile and we have a really bad loop in here. So the first thing, before we dive in and start fixing these things, I wanna show the um, what's in the profiler, show what, what we're seeing here, and then we'll jump to the actual functions. So you see here, the first thing in here is the do loop stuff. And the reason that this is dying is that uh, 
when we do deep profiling, we're getting a lot more info, and this loop is actually looping over something a thousand times. So if you look here, we have 25 calls, and it's calling material.setColor 25,000 times. Again, this is more of a sample just to really show the numbers and show the big spikes so that it's really obvious what we're doing. And again, we'll jump into a real project shortly after. So let's look at the code. So if we just open up the slow code and go to the top, we see the first thing we do is just update the renderer's material to a color for time value. And this is just um, pretty unimportant. We're just picking a random color. So if we go down to here, we see, or not a random color, sorry. We're cycling through colors. So we just increment some values. If they go greater than one, we set, we subtract one from them. And then I just do them a different value so that way they kind of semi cycle through different colors. Um, but this isn't a problem, right? So if we look at our code again, let's look at color for time. Um, okay, I was wrong. This is a problem when you call it 25,000 times. So we want to not do that. So the first step is obviously just get rid of this stupid loop because we're not actually doing anything useful there. And again, not a super helpful thing to get rid of, but because you're not going to have that in a real world situation, I hope. But it's uh, just getting to show what's going on. So now we run it with deep profile on and we'll see we're actually getting reasonable performance. It's not great performance, but we're getting, you know, we're not getting half a frame a second or whatever we were at before. In fact, if we hit the stats window, it looks like we're at, at 10 frames a second. So let's take another look and see what we can find. So I just pick a random spot on here and let's see what else we've got. So if we expand out, we've got slow code update. And the next thing is in do something else, expand that out. And of course, this is that debug log call. Now debug logs are extremely slow because they get the call stack. And I've seen it can kill performance many, many times in games just from people accidentally leaving them enabled and just forgetting to turn them off or delete them out. So this is one of the reasons I try to not use debug log too much, just use it temporarily then get rid of it right after I'm done with it. So let's delete that out. Let's see, that was in, oh, this is, that's for our next project. Let's see, let's open up slow code one more time. And if we go to do something else, you can see it's actually doing just that. So just delete it. Stop, hit play one more time. And uh, everything should be relatively fast now. Right, so now we're getting good frame rate because we, we found the couple things that were intentionally made bad. Now in your project, you're gonna have things that are accidentally slow. I do all the time, so. Just kind of expect that. Hopefully you don't have loops of a thousand things doing the exact same thing. Now let's jump over to the other project because I think that's gonna be a little bit more interesting. And hopefully you've got a decent idea of how the profiler works and what to look at. Oh, we got a lot of error messages here. So this is just a little spaceship game I've just been playing around with on the side for fun. Um, mostly just to play with controls and come up with other different ideas. And it's also a great source for demo material. So I got my controller here. And I'm going to hit play, and if I just hit Y, it adds in some bots. So you'll see the um, the menus right here start going through randomly selecting things. Um, it's supposed to kind of look like they're players, but it looks pretty bad, I think. So it just goes in and picks some, some ships, and then spawns, and we already saw kind of a big spike there. Let's open up that profiler window. And now we're going to see some actual real data. So let's take a look. Well, let's let it go for just a minute. Let's wait until we see the next big spike, maybe. There we go, things are dying. Uh, the camera's not quite in position right now. It's supposed to hover over them. Uh, I think it's kind of broken. You can see we've got a couple errors here. Well, let's let's stop and take a look now. So what was this big spike? All right, we got this one big, big spike that dropped us down to, oh, something really slow. Look at that, that was a three second spike. So uh, almost three seconds, 2.7 seconds, I guess. So what's causing that? Let's uh, expand some things out and take a look. So under behavior update, we have ship component update. Then we have ship component activate and ship weapon active tick. And then fire weapon and we just keep expanding it. And we go into the pooled mono behavior. So this is my pooling system and expand it again. And we get, get a pool. I'm just gonna keep going down. And I bet it's right here in this grow pool. So the way the pooling system works it just instantiates all of the objects that are needed for the pool. But I think I have it in this project set up to do it kind of lazily. So it waits until it actually needs the prefab to, to spawn it instead of uh, doing it in advance. 
So one easy fix for this spike right here would be to just preload and pre-warm all of my pools for the different weapons. And um, I think that's probably a little bit longer than this video will go on for. I, it's going to take a little while because we're dynamically selecting a bunch of ships and then we have to figure out what all the weapons are on those ships. But it's definitely a fix that I'd want to put in before releasing this anywhere. So we want to pre-warm those pools just by spawning the objects in advance. Uh, let's see what other kind of uh, issues we can find. So if we go through here, I'm going to guess that these are all very similar, these other spikes. Ship selection. Okay, what's this one? Oh, no, that's not it. It's in player update canvases. So here we're getting a slowdown from the uh, UI. So And it looks like it's rebuilding the layout of the UI. And it stopped as soon as we... St I think this is right when we started playing. So I think this is something in the uh, menu where we're doing that transition. We're not actually switching scenes. We're actually just turning off the uh, children here. So it looks like something with uh, these is causing a problem once they get disabled. It looks like it kind of goes away. So again, not something I want to fix right now, but now I know that that's an issue. And I know that I should look at this uh, when I'm ready to actually start optimizing the thing. And I want to keep looking over here and see what other kinds of things I can find. Actually, let me hit, uh, hit current and I'm going to grab the scene view and just drag it out here since my camera view is a little bit messed up right now. And I'm just going to resume and watch it go and let's wait and see what happens when somebody dies. I'm positive there's going to be a little spike there. Let's see. There we go. We got it. Oh, somebody died. And oh, yeah, look at that. So everything started slowing down a little bit. Or did it speed up? I don't know. Let's take, <laughs> let's take a deeper look. So here, what do we have on our most recent uh, spike? Let's see. Let's go to this one. This is the most recent spike we've got. So this one is under physics fixed update. So what's happening here is whatever's causing this spike is originating from a collision or a trigger enter. So let's see, it looks like we have, yep, it's on trigger enter of ship health. And here it's dealing damage. The ship is taking damage. We're calling into an event here to go into on health changed. And let's see, just keep going down this. Yep, handle ship death and spawn. Looks like spawn next ship is kind of the root of our problem here. So we're, it's actually the instantiation of the next ship. So if we look at spawn ship, no, let's just open up the code. Um, let's see, let's pull that up. I think I got it right here. Let's find spawn ship. So spawn ship actually just instantiates the next ship to spawn. So an easy fix for this would be to pre-instantiate all of the ships for the player. The way it works now is if your ship dies, we, I spawn the next ship and then you can fly around in that ship and then when that one dies, you spawn the next one. So a fix here would again just be to pre-instantiate all of the player's ships and then just disable them, kind of push them off to the side and then re-enable them once, the, once we're ready instead of, um, instead of spawning them right here. So I think I'll skip doing that today just because I think it'll make this video a little bit longer than I want. It'd probably draw it out another 20 minutes or so. And uh, I think hopefully you've kind of got the idea of how to use the profiler, uh, what kind of things to look for. Remember, logs are always a big hit and I see them every single time. Um, but hopefully, yeah, again, this helps. Uh, if it does, please make sure you share it with your friends. Uh, hit the like button and hit subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching.